Hey guys, so I just got back from seeing Spider-Man No Way Home at midnight here in Australia where I live it's midnight and everybody was wearing their pajamas and I'm like next time I go to see a movie at midnight I'm wearing my pajamas too. Anyway, so let's get straight into what you've come here for. Spoilers. So first let's talk about Matt Murdock. So Matt Murdock, if you don't know, is from the TV show Daredevil, which is a Marvel TV show. And a lot of people were wondering whether or not he was going to be in No Way Home. And yes, I can confirm he is in this movie, but only for a minute. So basically what happens is Mysterio releases Peter's identity. So his identity as Spider-Man is out now. And basically everybody turns on him. So he needs to hire Matt Murdock as a lawyer and he's only in it for a very short scene. So it sort of reminds me of The Dark Knight Rises, how everybody turns on Batman, how everybody just turns on Spider-Man in this movie and it shows how fickle they are. So anyway, basically Peter Parker is understandably having a hard time his college that he wanted to go to, MIT, isn't going to let him in. And they're also not going to let in MJ and his friend Ned because they're associated with him. So basically they're guilty as well by association. So basically he goes to Doctor Strange and says, Can you please help me? Can you do a spell to make everybody forget that I'm Spider-Man? And Doctor Strange, he's a little hesitant to do it, but he does it in the end. But then Peter keeps interfering and tries to get him to change the spell again and again. So he can let MJ remember and then his friend Ned remember and then Aunt May and Happy and... Basically, Doctor Strange should have said no. Like... You know, he really just put all the blame on Peter, but you need to remember that he's a 17-year-old teenager. And Doctor Strange should have known better than to keep changing the spell, like, once or twice, yes, but I think he did it, like, six times before it just went kablooey. Anyway, so, obviously the spell backfires, and... Doctor Strange manages to sort of contain it, but still a few people, villains, come through from other dimensions. So what villains do we see? So obviously everybody knows the Green Goblin and Doc Ock are in it because of the trailer. We have Electro. We also have the Lizard and we have the Sandman. So for those people talking about the Sinister Six, we have the Fabulous Five. So this might be an unpopular opinion, but I really did not like the character of Aunt May in this movie. So basically when Doctor Strange does the spell and unleashes the villains, the first thing that he tries to do is the sensible, mature thing to do. He tries to round up the villains and send them back to the dimension that they came from. But then Peter and Aunt May find out that some of the villains were about to die in their dimension and they try to save them and cure them and reform them and make them into good guys. And I just think it was a bit ridiculous because the whole world is literally hanging in the balance. Doctor Strange himself says the villains' lives are worth the sacrifice in a way, you know, because it's literally the whole world could end if they mess this up. And it just felt really self-righteous, like, I don't know, maybe a lot of people will disagree with me, but I really feel like Aunt May especially put Peter's life in danger. You know, he almost got killed trying to do what she wanted him to do. And in the end, we see the Green Goblin, a big surprise. He doesn't want to get reformed. And he kills Aunt May. And even towards the very, very end, she still is sticking to her guns, thinking that she did the right thing. And she does that classic line, 
There'll be scene in Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man movie when Uncle Ben dies. There'll be great power comes great responsibility line. And look, I'm all for helping and saving people. And, you know, trying to see the best in people. But at the same time, these are villains that have killed a lot of people. And, you know, if there wasn't really much at stake, fine. Try to save them, you know, try to reform them. But when the world is literally at stake, it just felt like a really weird thing to do. So it's time to answer the question that everybody is probably wondering. Do we get Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in this movie? And the answer is yes. So basically Ned steals Doctor Strange's ring and he opens up a portal and he tries to call Peter Parker through it and the wrong Peter comes. He does this two times and we get all three Spider-Mans together and basically they team up with Ned and MJ and the five of them try to take down the villains. Well, I should say, you know, reform the villains and make them into good people anyway. So that goes as you would expect it to go. They were having some success. We see with Sandman who wanted to get home anyway to his daughter. And with Doc Ock, they managed to do something with his chip in his head or whatever. So he stops hearing the voices in his head. And they were starting to fix Electro. But then the Green Goblin, who had been pretending to be one of the good guys and innocent. Well, not innocent, but you know, he was playing on the whole. I'm being controlled by my dark half. I'm not in control of myself sort of thing to gain sympathy from Aunt May and Peter. So basically he reveals his true colours and convinces the other villains to team up with him. So yeah, it's really, you know, exactly what I expected to happen. So the whole mirror dimension was really cool. I love the special effects of the mirror dimension. It was a lot like that movie Inception. So one thing that I really enjoyed about this movie was the whole bonding moment between the three Spider-Men. They all talked about their different trauma with, you know, with Andrew Garfield's MJ dying and Uncle Ben dying and, you know, all the stuff that they've gone through that only the three of them can really understand. And there's obviously a lot of jokes in between the three of them and some bonding moments that... I thought really added a lot of heart and a lot of humour to the movie. So this movie had humour, heart, redemption, action. It just had everything. So for those people that were wondering how Doc Ock and Sandman were villains in this movie when in the other Spider-Man movies, they got redeemed in those movies. It's because when they were pulled through the dimension, through the portal, they weren't at that phase yet where they were getting redeemed they were still villains so we had a really emotional moment which a lot of people saw coming I wasn't really sure if they were actually going to do this but the internet actually turned out to be right like the internet was pretty much right about everything when it came to theories popular theories with this movie so a lot of people had this theory that Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man would end up saving MJ because he couldn't save his MJ in his universe. And yeah, that happens. And he starts crying when he catches her. And it's a really beautiful moment. So at the end of the movie, basically, Peter realizes that he has no choice but to make the ultimate sacrifice and make it so that everybody... Even Ned and MJ forget who he is. So Doctor Strange does the spell. Everybody forgets who he is. And, you know, I'm really excited to see the Doctor Strange 2 movie and how this is all setting up the multiverse for that movie. It's going to be really good because Doctor Strange is one of my favourite characters and I wish we got to see more of him in this movie. So I would say this is definitely my favourite Spider-Man movie. Not in general, but out of this particular trilogy. I still think the original Tobey Maguire Spider-Man is probably my favourite one of all. 
So we see the post credit scene with Eddie slash Venom. And I didn't really get it. Like, I haven't seen Venom 2 yet, so I might be missing something. But basically, he's in the same universe and he's going to find Spider-Man. So I don't know if they're setting up some sort of crossover movie between the two of them. And Venom leaves some of his, like, black goo behind. So I don't know if that's going to, like, manifest in some way. Like, it'll infect somebody and create a new villain possibly and he got taken through one of Doctor Strange's portals it looked like so it could be connected to Doctor Strange as well so yeah I haven't seen Venom 2 like I said so there might be some things that I'm missing let me know in the comments down below if you've seen it and you can fill in the gaps for me so anyway I would give this an 8 out of 10 I really enjoyed it so let me know what you thought of this movie, if you've seen it, what was it, what was your favourite part of the movie? And if you want to see more videos from me, please subscribe, like, all of that stuff. Thanks guys.